Secret two, practicing detachment in the moment. Focus first on what you don't do and don't want to do in the interaction. Second, focus on your functioning, not theirs. And thirdly, focus on emotional circuit breakers. I want to share that it's easier to start to begin to detach by not doing things than by doing things. Again, when we are enmeshed or when we feel pinged or caught, it can be easier to start with, what do I not want to be sure to do? That can be a lot easier. Also, you know, detachment begins with us, not others, or not the other. It begins with us. So we want to ask self-focused questions. We want to be self-aware. We want to self-regulate. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And then lastly, doing actions and thoughts that can be learned and, and can be emotional circuit breakers for us. Because the electricity of the emotional field is flowing through them and me. And that's why I feel caught. And that's why I feel like I'm not free. I, I want to be reactive. I, I'm caught up in this relationship functioning as one. And we want to be careful about being caught up in the relationship and functioning as one. And when I say as one, they react, you react, they react, you react. You ping them, they ping you. That's, that's acting as one emotionally. So first, what not to do. First, I suggest to my viewers and clients... To begin by stopping what doesn't work and what only keeps the status quo and supports our chronic anxiety. So that's the first thing we want to do is to, is to stop doing things rather than thinking what fantastic or wonderful thing can I do to be, de be detached um, or to gain more separateness. We want to first stop what is continuing to connect us emotionally to them all the time in, the, in our emotional system. When we feel anxious or nervous about a relationship interaction, one in which I find myself starting to be reactive, I first start with what I won't do. By the way, these are all fusion or enmeshing behaviors. All these things I'm going to mention are what's going to keep the detachment from happening. It's going to attach you to them even more. And then that creates less flexibility for me to function on my own as myself. And what I truly want, need, desire. And also it, it, it uh, also hinders my ability to be more mature. Because now I'm a slave to this emotional system rather than being an adult and communicating and, and dealing with my feelings, my beliefs, my wants. Instead, I just come on to the other person. And some of those behaviors in which are enmeshing or fusing behaviors are defending myself. That's always a sign that I'm enmeshing if I'm defending myself. Of course, there, there are situations in which all of these behaviors might be, an, might be appropriate on an adult level. But for, most of the, for the most part, they're not helpful. Certainly, if I'm in front of a court of law, I want to defend myself. You know, that's appropriate. That's why I have an attorney. That's why, you know, there is an appropriate time to do that. But in relationships, defending yourself can be more problematic. So I don't want to defend myself. I don't want to yell. I don't want to argue. I don't want to shame. I don't want to convince. I don't want to try to change them. Often, I don't want to cry. Um, I don't want to make myself too vulnerable. 
I don't want to triangulate with this person and someone else. I don't want to overfunction. I don't want to underfunction. I don't want to blame. I don't want to blame them. And I don't want to blame me. Those are some of the things that I am and work on deciding what I won't do when I'm going into this relationship. Now, for many of you, and me as well, you know, if I don't do all of those things, what's much left to do? What is there to do? But I like being able to eliminate the things that are not helpful. Now I'm going to be more creative on what I want to do. Um, and, and, and you're right. When, when all of this is gone, what's left? You. And so what are you going to do about you with them? Not what are you going to do to them? Not what are you going to do to change them? But you're left with you in the interaction. And so we want to be left with us so that we're okay. Well, what do I want to share? How, if I'm not blaming, yelling, you know, shaming, convincing, well, then what do I want to say or do? And it's good to have all those things we're not going to do so that we get to, to be more creative about, well, what then do I want to do when I talk with them? Often we will stay more calm and less reactive if we say less and be more focused with a simple message. I might even, if, if I don't do all of that, you know, if I'm in a, in a situation that's a difficult relationship, if I don't do all of that, I may be left with, oh, really? In a matter-of-fact way. And if you notice that if someone says, if I'm detached, if I'm calm, if I'm matter-of-fact, and I say, oh, really? That is a very much can be a mature response because I'm accepting them being them. I'm accepting me being me. I accept that's the way they believe, think, feel, whatever. And I accept that I'm different and that I may not feel that way or think that way or believe that way. And so I say, oh, really? And I'm non-committal. Because I'm not going to commit to the old game that we would play in which they're trying to convince me, I'm trying to convince them, they're going to argue with me, I'm going to argue with them. Which ends up, as we, most of us know, in the same old quicksand that we've always been in. I, if you remember the saying, and, and forgive the kind of crass words, but don't just stand there stupid do something. Don't just stand there, stupid. Do something. I like the paradoxical opposite of that. And I use the saying, don't just do something, stupid. Stand there. And because oftentimes if I'm doing something, I'm probably going to do it out of my reactivity. So it'd be better if I were not reactive and stand there than if I become reactive and perpetuate the same old patterns over and over again. Um, and if somebody says, well, why aren't you saying anything? Why aren't you saying anything? Why aren't you arguing with me? And then, well, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the movie Bridge of Spies in which, you know, they, why, don't, why aren't you arguing? What's wrong with you? Why aren't you defending yourself? Why aren't you... And in the movie, the, um, the, one of the persons in the movie in Bridge of Spies with Tom Hanks, he responds, would it help? In fact, he's a, he's a Soviet spy. He gets caught. He's doing what he's doing for his country. He's pretty moral, pretty mature individual. Tom Hanks is brought in to defend him. And when he's facing the death penalty or execution for being a Soviet spy, um, Tom Hanks is all upset about it. Wondering, Why are you so calm? Aren't you worried about this? You know, this is life and death. And 
and the the uh, Soviet spy goes, would it help? And and it's he says that twice in the movie. And it's such a classic line, and I've loved it ever since. In other words, if if I am reactive like you're reactive, would it help? Because logically, it won't. Uh, it's it's not going to do make any difference. In fact, it could even make it worse. So try doing nothing. Um, now, when I say doing nothing, I don't mean codependent freezing. I don't mean fearful passivity. I'm talking about intentional doing nothing. And intentional is what's important. Intentional keeps us in our more mature adult. Reactive, guilt, uh, anxious, fearful, that keeps us in our more codependent or immature self. So intentionally is what makes a difference. And in fact, you can have two people doing exactly the same behavior. One feels obligated or guilty to do it. One has chosen this is what they want to do after looking at all the, the aspects of it. Both are uh, sacrificial behaviors, but one is codependent and one is mature because this has an intentionality to it versus a maybe unconscious need to be liked or be accepted or, you know, uh, those kinds of things. Or you can ask yourself, if I didn't do all those things above, what would I say or do? And uh, and again, I like the uh, Tom Hanks movie, Bridge of Spies response. Because, you know, if if somebody says, well, well, why aren't you talking more? You're just being silent. Well, would it help? Um and again, the logic of it is, the assumption is, we are supposed to do this dance. Why aren't you doing this dance? And then I want to look at it and go, but would it help to do the dance? Is the, If I continue to do that, it might be good to do something different. And I've oftentimes uh, suggested people do something very different to try to change because what we're wanting to change is the emotional polarity and the emotional circuitry that's going through the the relationships between the two of you, the relationship. And sometimes it's not the most logical thing or normal thing that will do that. Because what seems normal for a couple may be to argue. That may be the norm and what feels very normal. But it doesn't change the ongoing pinging of the relationship. Maybe standing there and reading the Declaration of Independence when your husband is wanting to argue at least would change the emotional dynamics. Now, I understand it doesn't make a lot of sense, but then again, I'm going, but if I read the Declaration of Independence quietly, softly, and matter-of-factly, that's going to change the emotional dynamics more than if I get engaged the way I've always gotten engaged and argue and defend and convince and feel bad and criticize and all those things that we do together. And so I go, yeah, it does sound kind of crazy to read the Declaration of Independence, but let me tell you what's more crazy. Continuing the same dance that you've always done coming to the same outcome, which really is more crazy? Actually, it's the latter one, not the former. So at least I'm doing, trying to do something positive to change how the emotional field works in terms of detachment. Secondly, now, well, what do we do? Here's what we won't do. Now, what do we do? We want to stay focused on us, on our functioning in the relationship. We want to get away from focusing on them or on others. And as Ross Rosenberg says, uh, become a great observer. You know, or at least that's what I say. He says, observe, don't absorb. And we become a researcher 
an observer of what's going on rather than an absorber. And when we are passive, like I mentioned above, we can be observers. When we calm down, slow down, we can observe more of what's going on in the relationship. And believe it or not, we will be more creative and less reactive. Um, and not have as uh, our emotions flooding us and flooding our thinking so much. Uh, so I think it really can be helpful to be more passive in that way. I'm not talking about abusive relationships. I'm not talking about dangerous relationships. So I want to make that clear. Don't borrow others' anxiety or feelings. Stay out of their skin. And choose to not have them be in your skin, which is the absorbing process. I want to observe rather than absorb. When interacting with others and anxiety or reactivity gets high, stop and take a break. When anxiety or reactivity is high, little good will happen and will probably keep the problem in place and the dysfunctional pattern in place. So again, if we're going to be reactive and we're going to act out of our reactivity, we're only supporting the status quo. It's not like we're resolving it. It's not like it's getting better. We will just probably continue the status quo. Even though it looks like we're being kinetic, we're doing something about this. We're arguing about it. We're talking about it. We're, well, we're just doing all this stuff, but nothing's changed down here. We're only thinking and doing all everything up here, and we're just doing the... And in fact, this is running this, the feel-think. We're doing the feel-think thing again. And when we're feel-thinking, nothing much is going to change as a result of that. And as I mentioned, you know, a couple always has the same argument about the same issue for years. You know, I asked them, did you ever think about stop going and stopping and going down that road or argument since you are continuing to do the same thing over and over and getting the same result? Um, and, you know, and I don't say that in a shaming way. I've done it as well as, as anyone has done it and kept the same patterns going. But I think we... We just do not come to the thought by being more objective and more of an observer that, wait a minute, this is not going to get us anywhere. We need to do something different. Now, we may not know what to do different. Maybe we should go get a coach. Maybe we should read a book. Maybe we should, because we need to do something different than we're doing right now. Maybe we should watch a video. Maybe we should hear a podcast. Um, the... And I would ask them, if you didn't argue about this, what would you be doing as a couple? And I think that can be helpful to uh, think about for them to begin to explore uh, an, what I call an option C. We do this, we don't do this, and then there's option C, A, B, and C. And I like C options. And most of us haven't learned to think C options. Um, often. I want to encourage you. I've got a workshop coming up. I hope that you will sign up. Go to my website. Uh, I think you'll find uh, the workshop would be very helpful to work with me. Stop inhabiting others and stop letting them inhabit you. That's what I call blending or enmeshing. Because so many times we do inhabit others and they inhabit us. Um, don't mirror or match their emotional state or intensity. Uh, that's common too. We will match their intensity or match their emotional state. And, I, you know, if they're mad, then I should be mad. No, if they're mad, I choose to be calm. If, if they're feeling bad, 
I don't have to choose to feel bad. You know, I'm separate from them. We want to also work on stop asking other focused questions and ask self-focused questions. Self-focused questions can help you with solutions and more self-regulation ideas. An other focus question, and I have a whole video on this, you might want to take a look at it. An other focus question is, why are they doing this? That's an other focus question. A self-focus question is, what do I do when they do this? How do I feel? What are my actions? What are my responses when they do this? That's a much more self-focused question. An other focused question, why does my mother always criticize me? A self-focused question is, when my mother criticizes me, what do I feel and how do I respond? And we take a look at observing our behavior and feelings, and then we have a more of an opportunity to regulate those. Oh, well, maybe I should change how I respond. Uh, rather than trying to figure out why mom does it or trying to get her to change, I stay focused on me. Use emotional circuit breakers. I also have a live video about circuit breakers you might want to take a look at. Um, circuit breakers help us to begin to get more detached. Slow down. If you slow down, that will help with the circuitry that's pinging between the two of you. Remembering, I am not you and you are not me. Reinforcing that belief within you. Become a researcher, as I said, an observer, not an absorber. Be a researcher. I want to see what's going on. I want to observe what's going on. Um, it, instead of being a part of the wedding party, be the photographer or videographer for the wedding party when you're in a relationship. Instead of being the bride or groom, be the videography videographer for... Uh, your relationship with the other person so that you're stepping outside of just being in the middle of it. Stop getting people to change. Act your age. Act out of your adult self. If I were acting my age, if I acted my adult self, what would I do right now? Give up your fantasies. Uh, work on your fantasies. Fantasies are a good way to keep connected to unhealthy relationship systems. We want to give up those fantasies. Well, if 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 I uh, if I only do these things, then I will be loved. Well, you've probably done that many many times, and you haven't resulted, and love hasn't resulted. Um, don't confront. Differentiate. I like to differentiate rather than confronting. Even if somebody is, you know, inappropriate and says, you know, Jerry, you're just such a jerk. Then I go, well, I haven't met that Jerry yet. Hmm. Maybe I will. Well, Jerry, you're just worthless. Well, that's interesting. I, I, I haven't, that hasn't been something I've known about myself. Um, and again, I'm differentiating in each of those responses, not confronting them. Don't tell me I'm, you know, worthless. There And there can be times when you can share that and say, please don't say that. That's not appropriate. I don't appreciate it. Uh, but I, And that's okay to make your wants known. But I'm not just trying to change their behavior. I'm trying to differentiate and to unenmesh in me, that's my goal, rather than changing them. Because maybe today they won't say, Jerry, you're worthless. You know, a month, two months from now, they may use another word or another name or do it in a different way. So I want to work on my de-enmeshment and my detachment. 
there are more ways that you can learn to uh, use circuit breakers, emotional circuit breakers, but I wanted to share some of those today. Please join up for my workshop. Uh, I want to thank you for watching today. Have a great day and be wise.